<clears throat> Alright, so the claim I'm, I'm responding to is standardized testing has a negative effect on students in the U.S. And uh, the three secondary claims he used were one, standardized testing does not accurately define students. Two, the amount of money that standardized tests cost is too much. And three, the amount of time lost in the curriculum to, prefer, to prepare for the test is too much. Alright, so the first claim. The first secondary claim, standardized tests do not accurately define students. Uh, key claims as evidence that a child having a bad day can perform uh, poorly on the tests. <clears throat> and that is true, like if a student is having a bad day, it, it can affect their test scores, but it doesn't show how it would neg negatively affect the student as, as an individual. Uh, maybe the student doesn't care about the test and chooses to not try on the test, so uh, he does bad on the test. But this still doesn't have a negative effect on him as an individual. Like the test doesn't count for his grade in the class or anything like that, and uh, it's just to show how the kid is doing in school. Um, also, the secondary claim is irrelevant because whether or not standardized testing accurately represents a student's progress, it doesn't show if it would have a negative effect on the student. If anything, it would just be a negative effect on the country because it's going to rank us lower against other nations in education which would just make us look bad as a country, but not uh, individually on the students. So this, the secondary claim to the amount of money standardized tests cost is too much. Uh, he claimed that an economist, Richard Phelps, calculated that about $575 a year are wasted per student to uh, fund the standardized testing. Uh, this would be true, but only if this, the test was funded by the student himself, like there was a fee or just like AP tests, you have to pay for those, but this, for standardized testing, it comes straight from the taxpayer money. Um, so this, again, it doesn't affect the student individually. It's, it's the taxpayers that are paying for it, so the money thing is not an issue when it comes to the student as an individual. Um, also, like a way it could affect students negatively is if they needed to lay teachers off or sell books in order to afford the test then that would affect the student, the student's education, so that would be a way it can affect the student negatively, but, it does, but they're not doing that, so it doesn't. <clears throat> and uh, secondary claim three, too much time is lost in the curriculum by preparing for these tests. Uh, so one of the evidence uh, points that he made was that in mathematics, 29 nations outperformed the United States by a significant amount, and he argues that uh, removing standardized testing will increase our scores in that because we focus more on the curriculum. But that's contradicting itself because the way they obtain the scores in the first place is through the standardized testing and by comparing those scores with other countries. Um, so without standardized testing, the only way a student can measure uh, his progress in the class is through a grade or a grade in the test. And uh, so, so standardized tests in this case are necessary to measure us between other nations and stuff. And uh, also, by the time you begin preparing for the, for the standardized test in class, uh, most of the curriculum is already covered. Like, so it's not really wasting time uh, that you could spend on the curriculum since it's already done by, at that point. It's like the last month of the school year. Um, and Yeah, uh, so and also after receiving your test scores, a student can focus on his weaker academic subjects and strive to do better, so that would be actually a positive effect that the, t the test can have on the students. Because after you look at your test scores, a student can be, oh, I, I'm not good at math, I'm not good at English. So next year they can focus on those areas to become a better student overall. And uh, to conclude, uh, I believe standardized testing does not have a negative effect on students in the U.S. Uh, <clears throat> because, uh, you, yeah, I believe standardized testing does not have a negative effect on students in the U.S.
All right. Kevin, the main points labeled, the secondary issues are put out there pretty clearly. Uh, when you get to the first point, I know exactly where you are. Um, the analysis that you have on the first point, and it comes up regularly, is that the students are not affected directly. And I think this is a good example of one of those things that we talked about on the fallacies. It's almost like that one that we had, uh, you know, only man is rational, no woman is a man, therefore no woman is rational. I think the meaning of students is being taken in two different uh, interpretations in this situation. In one situation, it refers to the collective body. In the other, it refers to the individual. And I think your arguments are really focusing on individual rather than on the collective. And I think the advocates' arguments tended to focus on the collective rather than the individual. And so as a result, I'm not exactly sure that you're arguing the same things. I think that you're kind of... Uh, you know, tilting at windmills on a couple of these points. Uh, I do like some of the questions that you raise at times, and I think, for example, on that last point that you have a very valid point where you're saying um, there is, you know, how would we know how we were doing if we didn't have the standardized test? And then there's also an argument, I think it could use some evidence, that suggests that uh, the test scores would allow students to figure out where they need to be focusing. If the advocate got a chance to respond, the argument might very well be the problem with the tests, if they're not accurate, is that they misplace students into the wrong categories or they don't get them accurately put into the things that they need and then maybe the individual effort would be harmed in some way shape or form uh, you know the 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 point on the second point where you say well the students don't pay for it themselves I never thought that the students paid for themselves I never thought that that was what the advocate was talking about this is an example of what I'm talking about when I say that I think you've got competing definitions or the term students has changed meaning in the course of the argument all right thank you